So welcome back everyone. I hope you had a nice lunch and at least some of you could get the salmon. Uh, <laughs> uh, so I would like to uh, now welcome our next speaker, uh, Rodrigo Sequeira Gonzalez Pena. Uh, Rodrigo is a data, data analyst at the Center for Data Analytics at the University of Basel. He has worked across a variety of academic disciplines and has taken various roles ranging from a researcher, a supervisor, a consultant, and a developer. His background is in electrical engineering and holds a PhD from EPFL, where we are right now. And during his PhD, he investigated recovery algorithms for subsample graph signals. So the stage is yours, Rodrigo. Thank you, Ta thank you, Taron. Uh, yeah, so thanks for coming for my talk on uh, what makes uh, interdisciplinary research work, at least from the perspective of us at the Center for Data Analytics. Um, so I'm a data analyst at SEDA. Uh, I will often say SEDA, the acronym for short for the center. Um, ah, sorry, it decided to stop working. Okay, yeah. So why have a why have a full talk on on research collaborations? Well, they often uh, don't work quite straightforwardly, right? So if we ever collaborate with people, especially outside your domain, uh, you see that there's always some issue that you face in the collaboration, some like m miscommunication, something that uh, gets in the way. And here. We're here to talk about some lessons that we learn and some experiences that we have from the perspective of uh, the Center for Data Analytics. So we as an institute, as a center, we, we kind of came, came into being as a sister uh, center, sister institution to a well-established uh, SciCorp, the Center for Scientific Computing at the University of Basel, uh, who traditionally supplied uh, uh, support on high performance computing and also scientific support traditionally in the areas of bioinformatics and physics, because that's where uh, most of the demand for an analysts and analysis uh, was in the university. Um, but in, in recent decades, uh, we saw the rise of uh, machine learning applications across uh, a variety of domains, and uh, several success stories that Taran has mentioned already in the beginning and the introduction of the, of the session. And also, uh, fairly recently, uh, we saw the rise of uh, the need for transdisciplinary collaborations. Uh, and here, really transdisciplinary, if I, I, I'd like to highlight that the University of Basel, unlike uh, EPFL or ETH, is not a polytechnic institute, so we really have a, quite a variety of, of departments, uh, including philosophy, ancient history, theology. And in all of those domains, you see a rise for or a demand for more quantitative uh, research, empirical research, and analytical methods and, uh, uh, to be used to, to progress science. And so uh, as sort of like a, a con confluence of all the, those needs and, and, and demands, SEDA, our center, was founded around uh, 2020. And to formalize those transdisciplinary collaborations and formalize this, the scientific support in, in analytics uh, in the university and also beyond, not, not necessarily uh, restricted in university. Uh, we as a center, we, are, we work in a sort of distributed fashion. We don't have an actual physical center within the university, but rather different offices. So there are people who work in France, uh, in Basel, and in Zurich, uh, all working uh, together. Um, we often meet, but mostly uh, remotely. And, and so the main interactions that we have are not uh, uh, with our, the other analysts or the other uh, 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 workers in SEDA day to day. It's mostly with the, the projects that we're working on and the people in those projects. Our role can be summarized uh, on the, uh, along those uh, dimensions that I'm, I'm, I'm displaying here on the slide. Um, the idea is that uh, when I mentioned the transdisciplinary collaborations, and especially in, in domains in fields like uh, theology or history, where for, for those researchers it takes a, a lot of overhead and, and, and it's very hard to, to hire analysts or, or, or people who would uh, be up to date to state of the art methods in analysis and machine learning and so on and so forth. Uh, so to sort of ease, ease their burden and, and help them directly go to the, the science part of of what they're interested in. We as SEDA can 
sort of accumulate all of those roles and, and skills in machine learning, data exploration, uh, visualization advice, and so on. And we can even provide training and teaching. So we sort of agglomerate all of those uh, things within our, our center, and we can provide those as a, a service or uh, enter in a partnership with other research groups within the university and even beyond uh, that. Um, um, so we are a fairly recent center created around uh, 2020. The, the, the whole team was, was complete when I entered uh, last year in 2021. And initially, we had uh, some effort, some PR effort to, of like spreading the word th that uh, we exist. But soon after, we saw a lot of requests uh, 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 popping up of people saying, we have this interesting data set or we have this interesting question and we have an, uh, an intuition or a hint that maybe uh, some analysis can be, interesting analysis can be done. Can you help us with that? And so we had to uh, de develop fairly early on uh, a sort of project selection criteria uh, to, to select the project that we would actually work on. An important thing is that uh, we don't work strictly as a service provider, but uh, as a scientific partner. So people don't pay to work with us and we don't pay to work with those people. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's, a it's based on a mutual agreement. So we, we kind of decided, if you look at more on the left side of this uh, slide, uh, th that there would be more of the like our goals as a, as a scientific institute uh, uh, in order to pick projects. So there have to be ethical, opportunity to advance science, uh, opportunity for us to grow and learn new things as a team. So we don't want to work on, on the same things over and over again. And more towards the right here, you have sort of the, the hard constraints of uh, real life, whereas that uh, we can't pick every interesting project that uh, appears to us because uh, it needs to be done in a reasonable amount of time. We, ha we need to have capacity in terms of analysts. Um, and we, we have to assess that the, 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 the people who want to work with us actually need us as analysts and not uh, could easily hire someone else to do it. So to, I mean, mentioning this project uh, criteria, I'd like to expand on a specific project that we worked on as a sort of a case study. Uh, and here has to do with natural language processing and job ads. We were approached by a professor in the economics department that had access to a, a huge data set of job ads in Switzerland. And she has this project, uh, like the context of, for this data set, that she has this project where she wants to track uh, how companies respond to the digital transformation and into spe specifically what they demand from, 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 from people applying for jobs and the requirements that they demand. Uh, so, so what they, they need and then they had initially in, in their mind is that uh, we had those, this data set, can, can somebody extract the educational requirements, let's say from each job ad uh, uh, and provide it to us as, as a table. So that's essentially what they needed. And, and this initially doesn't seem very appealing to us because they had this uh, extracting mindset as if uh, it was just a matter of matching uh, labels to, to given text. And they, they even tried approaching a, an external consultant company to, to implement something that they, uh, along those lines, it did ended up not working. So we kind of inherited this previous work and this previous mindset um, when we, we started uh, interacting with these people. And we, we kind of shifted their, their mindset to something that would be more interesting to us. So in the sense that uh, we wanted to, to learn more about uh, tr transfer learning approaches and, uh, and using more of a predictive lens on this data set, so predicting what would be the educational requirements, because some, sometimes it can be ambiguous in, in, in job ads, so you have to really kind of extract that from the text. Uh, but in order to do prediction, we needed data. So that's actually not a problem because SEDA, uh, as a center, we have a budget for, for data annotation efforts. So we actually paid those researchers to annotate a subset of data set for us with what will be the labels that they would uh, expect us to, uh, to predict. And we, we kind of input that in, feed, ba feed, feed that back in into our analysis pi pipeline. Uh, to start working on fine-tuning a state-of-the-art uh, NLP model to predicting those education labels. Uh, but not all, not all project is the same, and here I'd like to just expand on a, a sort of cloud of what are the different roles that we can take on different projects according to their need. Uh, so sometimes, uh, as uh, the project on the upper left, 
that dealt with a, a study on, on inter, intrafamilial communication and healthcare in, uh, intervention study. Uh, there, uh, we were mainly supervising a, a PhD student in doing actual coding and research work, selecting more as a consultant or advisee, advisor uh, to that. In others, like the one in the middle here, which deals with uh, sexism in the political Twitter, uh, there we were sort of co-developing code with a political science and defining what would be our, our data set and our targets and so on. Uh, some others, like uh, this one here uh, on the top, are more research heavy uh, because they needed us to learn interpretable representations of uh, neuronal data uh, that correlated with uh, the behavior of, of mice that were being recorded. Uh, we also have projects with external partners. Uh, uh, that one here, the Women's Brain Project, where where they wanted to, develop, to gather scientific evidence for sex and gender uh, impact on brain and mental diseases. And in some others, the, the work is mostly like uh, trying to come up with creative visualizations to prove a point, uh, such as uh, the last one here, where uh, a publishing house uh, wanted, wanted to know if uh, writing about one's life memories can help better cope with them. Um, yeah. But some ideas and, uh, or some propositions don't go forward, and here I'm trying to speculate why. Um, we had these very interesting uh, uh, groups with very uh, interesting, unique data sets at the University Hospital in Basel. Uh, we tried approaching them, uh, but that, that, that didn't work really well because they are already a well-oiled machine with, uh, with analysts, and, and they can, their bottom line, their scientific output doesn't necessarily need us, so we weren't a priority for, for, for collaboration. Um, uh, we had also an example of a group from Palestine that wanted to hire uh, graduates from the universities, but uh, they didn't have any specific project, so we don't really uh, can, can do anything about it because we work on a project-by-project project basis. Sometimes there's lack of guidance from the domain ex expert. So here it w uh, somebody approached us uh, about investigating the network of influence uh, from a government agency across Europe, and there we clearly saw that the PhD student didn't have any guidance as to what would be the consequences of doing this study and, and uh, what, what is it that we could actually measure from the data set that they had gathered. And there are other examples uh, that we can expand upon if you have uh, interest during the, the, the Q&A. Uh, so here I'm, I'm going to try to summarize all, all of this uh, using a, a scale metaphor um, uh, to see what, what works or not in, in those collaborations from our pers perspective. So first of all, we try not to, we try to, to explain to people that, uh, try not to see us as, a, as a strictly a service provider uh, that, that uh, needs a sort of like a, that is being paid to produce an output, but rather as a, as a partner in research. Uh, and with their partnership, uh, I mean, uh, comes trust and, 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 and they need to, to, to see us as, as equals towards a, a certain goal. There are some other aspects that uh, fall into a sort of gray area that no, don't necessarily hinder the process. So I mentioned before uh, a money aspect, sometimes not having money to, to actually uh, do something on a machine learning or data science pipeline might not be a problem because we have budget to, to, to do that. And not having a clear path or clear deliverables can also not not be a hindrance because we as research partners can help sort of design what ultimately the research question would be. Uh, but then other negative uh, aspects that comes from, from all those projects that I mentioned is that uh, we really need somebody not to be working on their uh, free time and, and, and to have domain expertise because as was mentioned before in, in, in the morning, uh, we as sort of the technical experts really need to have a, a, a counterpart that has a clear um, uh, view of, of their domain and, 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 and that is like a, uh, exclusively or, or most of the time uh, 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 working on, on that, not only on their free time. Uh, and also need to have us for, for our expertise. Uh, it has to be really something state of the art in terms of analytics and, or, or deep learning, not something that uh, could be off the shelf and uh, another other analyst could do it. And no scientific goal because um, one of our mission statements is to advance science, so we really have to have a, like a novel science as an output of a project. Um, 
things that uh, that need need to to be there or that help a project go forward is openness to change. So since we're partners in research, we can't just expect uh, to have like a fixed uh, strategy or a path to go forward. Things can change. We might need new data. We might need to shift the targets. We might need to ask a different question. Uh, and so and also people have to be willing to learn because because we're not a service provider, we we can't be expected to provide the same, to work on the same project, same questions over and over again. Uh, we actually try to, to train people and to help people um, either uh, uh, hire the expertise that they need or, or learn by themselves to do something after a project is done. And they have to have interesting data and questions that tie into to our scientific goal of working on interesting problems and advancing science. So this is uh, the summary of uh, what makes it work for, for transdisciplinary collaboration for us at the Center for Data Analytics. Uh, thank you very much, and I can answer two questions that you might have. Uh, thanks a lot, Rodrigo, for this nice presentation. So do we have any questions from the audience? Thank you. Uh, I have a question. What is, how do you measure a reasonable amount of time for a project if you do not charge for it? Because uh, you get, uh, does it not gi can give to, uh, re lead to conflicts? Because you might think now it's enough, and the researcher says, no, no, but go on. <laughs> Just work on it. Yeah. Anyway uh, for free for them. Yeah, I mean, our, our since we, we don't charge for it, our currency is time and relationship, right? So... Mm -hmm. So a uh, way to define a reasonable amount of time is uh, beforehand, even accepting the project to sort of establish that, uh, first of all, we're, we're also uh, like interested in the outcome and like uh, we're, we're also taking a risk when taking a project. And, uh, and, and so that we, we have the, the same, uh, um, yeah, we're taking the same risk and we, ha we want the same goals as the person who we're taking a project with. So. Normally, when we, we, we try to, to say uh, that a project is done, um, is that uh, we're really sure that we, can, we have something to convince that, okay, based on our in initial interactions and what we initially planned from this project, this is like a, it's time to put a, 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 like a, 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 a stop but on it. And but do you communicate that to the, to yes. the researcher in yes. advance? So yeah, or we just during the runtime of the project. Yeah, in, the, uh, in advance and also uh, during if something changes, because we always try to, to be upfront about how how the relationship is going to be, because we're really trying to build relationships, and we want people to potentially come back with new and different questions or or ex or exp uh, something to expand upon. Another thing is that uh, uh, we really don't have uh, as much manpower as uh, we potentially. Uh, could envision heaven. So we're really uh, restricted as to how many people can work on how many projects uh, at the same time. And we, we make this clear to the, to the people we're working with that uh, if something, say, drags for more than one or two years, uh, it might be time to put a, a stop on that because we can't have, uh, we, we kind of have to have variety in our portfolio as well. So, so we, we, we have constant checks, e weekly, even monthly, to see, okay, do we have any deliverable that we can, we can think of in the near future that could potentially work as a sort of stop for right now in this project or not? Okay. Um, thank you. Um, so in the end, you said that um, you also need domain-specific guidance um, to make a project successful. So how do we make sure to get this at the beginning of a project, to know enough about the domain science? Yeah, if, we, if we're interested enough in some project, then we'll always have a meeting or two to discuss it before even accepting to take it in. Uh, and those meetings are important for us to first see uh, where, where are those people coming from and if what have they worked on before uh, related to that, if they have, like, if they seem to, to have enough uh, of a, a grasp on the problem itself, at least from their side, to no, for us to know that they're a reliable, uh, 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 like, a partner. One of the projects that I mentioned on that uh, had l lack of guidance on that aspect was that we were approached by a PhD student uh, who wanted to work on a theme uh, that his advisor was not really uh, an expert about or didn't really know much about. So already there, w w we kind of noticed that uh, 
we couldn't trust on, on his advisor to, to provide us with, uh, let's say, um, yeah, theoretical backing or, or literature backing on, on their side of the problem. And on top of that, we, we consulted with an external expert on, on that particular side of things, on that particular government. And, and they explained to us exactly what would be the, like, uh, the contentions plans, the possible consequences of doing this project and so on. And those are all, are all things that we saw that this PhD student hadn't considered. So those all raised red flags that we then came up to, to him and said, okay, we're not uh, going to take this as a project. Do we have any other questions? Ah, I see a raise hand. Thank you. Thank you for the talk. I can even give you a choice. Do you want sort of a political question or a nitty gritty one? I mean, <laughs> nitty gritty then. Hit, hit me. <laughs> what What do you use for for project management and sort of I, I mean uh, communicating internally and with the users? Because you have many partners here. Do you use email, Google Docs, Trello, Slack, blah blah blah? What do you use? Yeah, to be honest, we're still trying to figure it out. <laughs> For now, it's a it's it's a it's a mix of things. Email. We have a weekly meeting where we kind of like do the state of the union, let's say. Uh, how how are things going? So we, we we sort of do like a project summary. Ultimately, it's up to the analysts to manage their own projects. Uh, I mean, the 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 coordination team has a, a highlight view on, on all of them, and they can maybe push for for something or or, or another. But the nitty-gritty um, management aspect is up to the analysts. So that's why also we don't take uh, many projects per analyst so that we have like a, a manageable amount. So maybe I'll be working on at most four or maybe two projects that demand like a, a, a lot of, uh, of, of my concentration and two that are maybe like a supervisory role or something more ad uh, as a consultant, let's say. So thanks a lot again, Rodrigo, for this nice talk, and was glad to be with you for your talk. Yeah, thank, thank you. you, thank you, everyone.